on stage family i hope you all have an amazing 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 day so far today what we're going to go over is i'm going to share with you guys a 20 pound weight loss case study we're going to go over oh there we go so we're going to go over a 180 pound um 40 plus age woman's weight loss journey so i'm gonna break this down head to toe for y'all here so as we go through this training if you have any questions make sure you drop them down in the comments and i can uh i can answer comments as we go as well okay so without further ado let's dive in so a 20 pound weight loss case study so this girl she's 40 so i got all the uh, all the details about the client for you okay so she's currently 180 pounds her goal is to weigh 160 pounds so she wants to lose 20 pounds total her height is five six her uh she's 46 years young and she works full time a sedentary job and she has two teen kids okay she works out maybe one time a week and she doesn't have any food plan and she never she's the type of girl who never had to worry about her weight growing up so she never really had the proper eating habits she likes sugar a lot and uh, she never developed the proper eating habits okay and then she also struggles with snacking at nighttime and then sometimes weekend events like social drinks whatever it may be okay this is a very very common case study by the way this is why i want to make this training for you all today is because many 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 of the ladies that i coach struggle with this you know some of them a lot of them they never really had to worry about their weight growing up but then they found as time went on they got sedentary lifestyles they had kids uh their weight really caught up to them after putting themselves in the back burner and uh and and they never really had to worry about it before right so this is what we'll dive into today so here's about the client so it's really important to know about the client because you know let's say for example if she's five foot one right here's a, a, here's one thing to know is that if you are shorter when it comes to weight loss right you could be shorter which automatically means your metabolism is going to be like less than someone who's taller than you because the more weight that we have in our body um the more higher our metabolism is going to be most of the time so your metabolism is already going to be slower but uh your hunger your stomach could be the exact same as somebody else's who's like six plus uh six feet plus tall okay so it's going to be a little bit of a challenge there but that's why it's so important to keep full but anyways a little side note for you so this is about the client okay her common struggles when it comes to this journey here is she's confused she's not sure you know she's she's not sure if she should do keto if that's going to be a fix if if it's her hormones messing up with uh with her weight loss or she's not really sure what's going on the next thing is that her food habits as well as we mentioned um when it comes to it she never really developed proper food habits she likes sugar a lot and then she deals with snacking at nighttime and then the weekend events as well okay and the next one here is eating enough food and fueling her body properly so making sure she's getting enough protein in her body and then learning to control food okay so this is the 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 struggles that this girl is going through so the setup outline of how this is going to look what we're going to focus on here is typically a case like this here right typically a case like that once we figure out like once we can like cross off the little bad habits so like the sugar you know the weekend events balancing the balancing the, those in and getting some proper movement in that's going to be a massive game changer for this girl the biggest key though is what is going to be sustainable right how do we sustain the results we want to make sure it's sustainable so the setup outline of what we're going to do here for her is we're going to build out number one we're going to build out a routine based around food timing and her lifestyle okay what i mean by that is that if she has a weekends where she doesn't want to give it up she likes to have her wine on the weekends you know she likes to have some snacks or she's traveling on the road with her kids sports and she knows that she eats along the weekend what we'll do then with her food structure and her routine is that we'll set it up where she's less calories in the week and then more calories on the weekend to kind of make up for that just like that safety net there on the, on the weekends now other things just and overall we should all have a routine because it's just so powerful either a routine or a daily power list to help really with that momentum that consistency and making your journey predictable as well now the next thing we're going to set up here is we're going to set up family friendly simple food plan to follow high protein focus as well we don't need to cut out the cars we don't need to do any drastic crazy changes just by getting like the foundation on track it's going to help her feel so so much better and get her the results she wants so we'll set up family family friendly simple food plan that she can follow along we're going to add in exercise only three times a week is going to be needed for her at this stage here and the power behind that is that it's going to help her preserve her muscle shape her body the way she wants to and then we also have leeway room so that way if she's hitting a plateau we can always add in like an extra day or some more steps a walk where that may be so it's very sustainable it's very very doable 
Now, the next one is getting consistent um, and then focus on education food habits, right? We don't want to go zero to 100 trying to learn everything overnight. So what we'll do with her, we'll get her on the right routine. We'll get her consistent with her food prep, make sure her food's on track. She's, she's crushing that, getting the workouts consistently done as well. Once she's done that for about almost two months or so, where it's just becoming a normal habit, she's very in like into the routine. She's loving it. We've changed any struggles that she might be having. Then we would dive more into like the food control, being flexible with their food, knowing how to have a cheat meal and working around it, those little things there. Okay. Now, after that, it's uh, we probably make adjustments for her just based on what my experience around the eighth week in is where we'll probably have to adjust her calories so she continuously loses weight uh, every single week. Okay. 20 pounds, 180 pounds right now, five, six, we can easily lose around a pound, pound and a half per week with this approach. So how this is going to look, the plan is we're going to set her up where she's doing overall on a seven day average, she's doing 1,750 calories per day. Okay. She's doing three meals a day and on a 12 hour eating time frame. Okay. We're going to do the 12 hour eating time frame to help her with her food time. So that way she can easily keep full and on track with their goals. And it's very, very sustainable. Okay. The next one we're going to do is meals done for her to follow. Okay. So this is where I'll just do it, the custom food menu for her, her calories, everything like that. So she can easily follow along. So she doesn't have to take all that extra time figuring out what to do, you know, how to eat, how much to eat, the portions. We'll just help her out with that for the first week or so, get her on track with that. So it's very, very easy to follow along. And then the workouts three times a week, full body for three months, then isolated movement. So what that means is that Right now, she wants to drop 20 pounds, okay? It's like that 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 fat that's kind of covering up her, her, her firm tone body. So it's more so around her stomach area, around her hips. It's around her arms and her back is where it's bugging her most. So what we need to do here is at first, we want to just lose the body fat, preserve her muscle mass, and get her really strong and firm feeling, okay? After we're dropping that weight down, maybe on the last five pounds or so, or once she finally lost the weight, then we can dive into more so isolated movements. When I say isolated movements, that's where like we specifically target certain areas, right? So right now she'll do this method here to get the best thing for her box so she can be quick, get effective, quick, amazing results when it comes to her, her body goals. And then after once we've dropped most of the fat and she's into the routine, then we can do more isolated movements where it's like, you know, she's not burning as many calories, but that's not the main focus anymore. It'll be more so just like tighten up those little areas that she wants to work on, right? So maybe it's more triceps because she wants to work on her arms, little things like that, okay? Then the next thing that we're going to do here is working on food control around the eight-week mark as well. Okay, diving into this. So here is kind of like what her routine would look like on a workout day. And how we would go about this. So when it comes to this, her workout day schedule example, so essentially let's say she wakes up at 5 a.m., right? And uh, and she goes to sleep at 10 p.m., okay? So now that we know this, if this is kind of already what her, her, her like sleep and wake time, I always like to reverse engineer my client's routines based off like what they're already doing with their sleep. So if we know she's uh, sleeping around 10 p.m., right? Um, we are automatically know that she shouldn't eat three hours or so before bed, two to three hours before bed. So we 10 minus three instead of seven. Okay. Now let's discover that, uh, you know, let's say that she can't eat at seven in the morning because she's at work, right? So she needs a little more, more less time. Okay. Well, we'll set up her final meal at six 30 then, and then we'll set up her meal one at six 30 AM. Okay. That way, it's about three and a half hours before bed. So she eats the right foods, has enough water. It's going to help her keep full so she's not getting into those cravings at nighttime. And then we can set up where her meal one is up at 6.30. So that way, it's a lot of her schedule. And she's got her 12-hour eating time frame set up. Okay? For those who don't know, there's a strategy that I teach. And it's called the 12-hour eating time frame. And basically, what you do is just a quick breakdown course. I won't go too into detail basically is that you have a 12 hour eating time frame. First meal at 6 30 in the morning. Last meal of the day is at 6 30 PM. When it comes to 12 hour eating time frame, this is going to help with your circadian rhythm. So your inner clock, so you can function better and feel better. But also what it's going to do is help you keep full longer and keep that structure in place with your food. The next step that you want to take is most of your calories, about 40%, almost 40%. First meal of the day, start your day a high protein, big breakfast. Um, by the way, this is just another strategy. It's not saying everyone has to do this because I do a few different ones, but this is one that's very, very effective. 
And she has most of her calories in the morning, so 40% of her daily calories are on breakfast. The power behind this is that besides everything else I just listed off, if you ever do go overboard one day, right? Let's say you ever do go overboard one day or on the weekend, you have too much wine, something like that. You can easily fast the next day, skip your breakfast and then have your lunch and your dinner still. And you're cutting out that large, large sum of calories. So let's say you ended up eating, you know, 600 calories last night and you completely went overboard. Instead of feeling guilty or feeling lost in what to do, the power behind this is that the next day you could just cut that breakfast out if you have to right? And that breakfast can be about 40% of that daily calories. So that's going to be a great amount of calories that you can just cut out. So that way you can get back on track from that little slip up. That's what I really, really love about this structure here, the strategy, the 12 hour eating time frame. So let's say that works for her though, right? So she wakes up at 5 a.m. Her first meal is at 6.30. That's about 40% of her daily calories she's going to get in. So we want to focus on fueling her up, very high protein, good solid food. That way she's optimizing her hormones as well first thing in the morning. I did a training on my YouTube guys. You guys should really check it out if you want to learn more about your hormones and how like how much they really are truly impacted uh, before even 12 p.m. strikes on the clock. You should watch it on my YouTube at Coach Hayward. It's, it's pretty crazy. So First meal around 40, uh, 40% of her daily calories, though, that's going to keep her very, very full. That's going to start her day off strong where she's having amazing energy. She's going to be feeling really, really good. She's prepped for the day. You know, she had a lot of calories, so she's going to be kept full for quite a while. Meal number two, then we'll say is average at 12 p.m. on lunch break. And then if she needs to, we can add a snack at 3.30 as well before the gym. Okay. We add in the gym after her work. So what we're going to do is have it stack. Okay. And the reason why we added it in after her work and not in the morning is because she's got teen kids now. So that way they don't really need to always rely on her so much. So she's getting more of her time back. So she finds that after work, it's good to get a workout done and kind of deload, get the stress off her mind. And that way she can come home. She's feeling good. She's not stressed out. She's way less likely to give in the stress eating stuff like that sugar as well, because when we're stressed out. We might not even know it. Uh, but when you're constantly stressed out, right, when you're not feeling good and you're stressed out, your body is going to crave that comfort food. Carbs are literally like it's it makes us feel great when we eat them. <laughs> so this is why she's going to go to the gym after work. OK, so let's say meal two at 12 snack is at 330, a high protein snack and then gym at uh, we'll say at 330 or so, like after she gets off work at three. So snack and then gym. Perfect. OK, with her workout, she's going to do three workouts a week full body training. She's going to do my method. So essentially it's going to be you focus on your three main muscle groups, your chest, your back, and your legs. And uh, she's going to work on that. So that way it's only about 30 to 40 minutes a session maximum. And she gets the best bang for her buck. Okay. So she goes after the gym. She habit stacks because she's going right after work. So she gets the workout done. And then her final meal is supper at 6 30 PM. And this is where it's going to be lots of protein, lots of water that she wants to drink throughout the day as well. High protein, high fiber. And we're going to practice slowing down the eating, taking her time so that way she can be kept full. Okay. So these are all things that we're going to implement in the evening. So that way she's not dealing with that sugar battle and those cravings after. Okay. So that's kind of how her eating setup will look like. And just when her workout days are set up as well. Now, during the week, what we're going to do, just given that she does like to eat a lot during the weekend and she's out and about, what we're going to do during the week then is instead of eating 1,750 calories, right, because that's her goal, her daily goal to lose this weight, we're going to do 1,600 calories instead from Monday to Friday. And what that's going to do is that's going to give her an extra 150 calories times five, right, because Monday to Friday, 150 calories that we're cutting out from her deficit, during the week. And then that way on the weekend, she has an extra 750 calories that she can add on to either her Saturday and Sunday. So she doesn't have to feel guilty if she wants the wine glass, if she wants to have a treat or a cheat meal, she doesn't have to feel guilty because she saved those calories for that specific event, right? You know, the biggest problem that a lot of us have when it comes to weight loss is that we're not too, too far off for actually getting results. We're literally just a few fixes, cutting back on the sugar, the eating out a few times a week, like cutting that down, eating more high protein and staying consistent. But the problem is, though, guys, over and over and over again, I stress this and I stress and I stress this because I've been doing this stuff for eight plus years now on my own, is that it's about sustainability right? What is going to be sustainable? So we're fixing all these little things, but as you can see, it's not like we're doing anything crazy, right? There's not any crazy drastic changes. We don't need to do those. We need something that's predictable, 
that's sustainable, something that's fit for you personally, you know, a plan that fits your lifestyle, your routine, your time, your schedule. That's a huge game changer. And then adding in the foods that you enjoy, but just make sure it's good protein, adding the spices, whatever makes it tasty, right? And then knowing how to make the swaps, protein for a protein, a carb for a carb, a fat for a fat. Might sound complicated, but once you get into it, it's like anything, right? It's like becoming a mom. At first, you're probably very scared. You're probably very nervous. Eventually, over time, though, you probably become an expert mom because you've done so much, right? Same thing with your job. You're probably very nervous on your first day, but over time, you became probably the boss, right? You probably crush it now in your job. It's because you put in the reps, right? You put in the reps over and over and over again. So that's why we had to do this for ourselves. And that's why we stress, like, you know, we got to make ourselves a top priority because we can't pour from an empty cup. And if we always continue to put everyone else before ourselves, we're not be able to give everyone our best selves. And if you want to be able to, sh- if you want to be able to help people, you got to help yourself first, right? So we got to make ourselves a top priority. So that way our standards, our goals, our health, it's a non-negotiable. And then we can add in everything else around, it, right? We can build it into our lives. We build our health and fitness into our current lives. Okay. A lot of time when it comes to this weight loss, we feel like we often have to start this plan. Like, like okay, I'm going to wait till after vacation. I'm going to wait till, I'm going to wait till the new year. The more we wait, the more we're just going to stay stuck and in, in not feeling good in our skin, right? There's, there's no point in waiting to make this change, especially if you want to make this a lifestyle change and not a diet change, right? Dieters, that's the way we think. Lifestyle, start now, improve as you go. You'll grow as you go, right? You cannot lose if you just do not quit, okay? There's, it's not about sprinting. It's about developing the habits, putting in the reps and showing up for yourself, staying consistent, And the magic happens from that. You will get the results that you want. Okay. Just to give you guys some motivation here. If you truly want to succeed at your weight loss journey, right? If you, if you're a hundred percent all in, like want to make this change happen. I've never, ever, 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 ever in my entire career, ever in my life or all the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of clients I've coached. I've never had someone not hit their goal who never gave up on themselves. As long as you refuse to give up on yourself and you keep moving forward, you keep trying all right, like the same goes, you knock on the door long enough, eventually someone's going to open it up. Or there's another one that's like, uh, you hang around the barber shop long enough, eventually you're going to get a haircut. Your, your time's going to come. You just got to keep moving forward. You just got to keep going. All right. So back to the program. So during the week, she's going to eat 1600 calories. So that way she has the extra 750 calories um, on the weekend for social events and treats. So this is how I do my stuff when it comes to my calories during the week versus weekend. Okay. So that's how we're going to set that up during the week. We'll just focus on high protein, good fiber with the macros. Just a little share with you guys here is that when it comes to your weight loss, the very first focus for you is, is calories first, excuse me, calories first. You got to hit the calorie goal. Then the next goal after the calorie goal is your protein goal. You got to make sure you eat enough protein. Then after the protein goal, the next goal after that is just your, your, your fats, your carbs, right? And I would say, don't put too much stress on that. Trying to hit those goals right now. Just focus on the first two. And then we can build off that. Okay. But that's training for today. So this is exactly what her outline is going to be and how we're going to crush this transformation and what we're going to do for her personally. So just going over again, 20 pounds, weight loss case study. She'll lose that 20 pounds, about three to four months maximum. And uh, based off her setup and uh, current weight, 180 pounds, working full time, sedentary lifestyle with two teen kids. This plays a big influence on how we made her plan, like her, her children and everything. Um, Works out maybe one time a week before. She had no food plans. So that was the biggest fix that we had to make. And then never had to worry about weight. So she ha- did have some bad food habits, right? Like the sugar um, and, and the snacking at nighttime. We set her up on the 12-hour eating time frame because that was worked best for her. And now her last one of the day is very high protein, good fiber. It's consistent to help her keep full. And she's drinking enough water um, to help her keep full as well and on track. And then weekend events, we cut back her calories during the week. So that way we can make up for the weekend events, right? And then uh, let's see. So now she has clarity. She has a plan. She knows exactly what to follow. She's going to be working on naturally getting better food habits with the consistency of getting her food timing, her prep, everything set up there. And then eating enough food and feeling your body. Her plan's already set up, so she's following that along there. And then learning how to control food, which we'll dive into more later on, right? So that is the plan, though. That's exactly what we do there when it comes to this. So if y'all, if y'all feel like this might be a little bit overwhelming, you know, and, and you've been on your journey for, for, for quite a bit of time now trying to make this transformation happen and you do feel like you're ready to get some help, 
and you're determined to make this change, message me CH and I'll show you exactly how we can help you out in making this change happen. We'll make an amazing transformation happen. So other than that though, I really, really hope you guys did enjoy this, uh, this training here today. More to come like this. Let me just check if there's any comments and then we'll end her off for the day.